good baking day last week with our spaghetti, our garlic braid, our chocolate cake. Such a hit, as always. As always. Mm -hmm. Okay, we, we polished you're, off you're our Rob, cake. I mean. Rob is like, baking day is the best thing to ever happen to me in my entire life. I know. And he's not wrong. Right. Um, so today I'm really excited because we're going to do, it's, you know, it's winter. We want to put something yummy on the stove while mm -hmm. we do the rest of our baking. Right. And I think another really delicious staple is chili. We love chili. Jenny's recipe that she uses, she, she used to have a, a, a harvest festival. I did, every month. Every, yeah, every, every year. Fall. And you made the most amazing chili, but it was really easy, simple, flavorful. I will go online or I'll go to a certain chef and they'll give me a chili recipe. Wait, we have to stop. My eyes. We're doing a classic chili. Jenny yes. used to have her fall, fall festival. festival. I would do it every year. It was huge. It was like a hundred. All the neighbors hundred people over. would be there. And you made this big pot of chili. Yes. And your recipe has always been so simple because mm. I have found that when I go online or if I get a famous chef's recipe, uh -huh. it's a little too fancy. Like I'm like, Emeril Lagasse's for instance. Was had, it really my fave? He, he had ingredients that you couldn't even buy at the store. And I was like, no. And then we it would take hours, like like you thickened it with masa. It was stuff oh, like that where right. I'm like, I, right. I love the energy of this, but I just want to get chili on on a Saturday and move right. on with my life. Right. So this is a very simple, delicious, flavorful recipe that is very adaptable. You yes. made your pot. And mine's a little bit different. It's you can you can adapt, adapt it to your family's it. needs and wants and, and what they want. Make it as yeah. spicy as you want it to be. Add more beans and less meat. More meat, less beans. No beans because your kids think that that's disgusting. Right. Um, and then in that case, maybe some more bell peppers, some more onion, whatever you want to do. But we'll give you the basic recipe that you can. Right. Now, we're in Nebraska, mm -hmm. and in Nebraska. There is something that's really weird and funky. It's actually a Midwest thing, but Nebraska really took it. One of our restaurants here, like Runza, is yeah. one of our fast food chains, has made it become a real thing. But when we grew up in school, it was chili and cinnamon roll day. You don't knock it till you try it. Don't knock it till you. They complement each other. The the spicy with the and sweet the, and the chili and the cumin with the sweet and the cinnamon yes. is actually freaky dynamite. So we're gonna do chili. And we're gonna do cinnamon rolls. Yes, we are. And what else goes with chili? Cornbread. Cornbread. Love. And we have to. And we're gonna make a real good cornbread. Real too. good. Real that good. Raises real high, real fluffy, real delicious. And we're gonna have fun because we're gonna make chili three different ways. Yes. So we're gonna show you how to make chili. You can make chili as a dip. Yes. With, we're gonna fry up some tortillas and make our own chips. So you yes. can have chili as a dip. Right. You can have chili as a main dish mm -hmm. with your cinnamon roll on the side. Right. You can also mm. cut out a big slab of cornbread. Delish. Drizzle it and use your chili, chili as, as a garnish. A, as a garnish. And then plop all those good fixings on top, like sour oh, cream and all stop. that yummy stuff. Stop. So we've got a full, we've got cinnamon rolls to bake. We've got cornbread to bake. We've got chili to put on the stove. We I do. say, but you know, but first, you know what? We always want to make sure that it is the journey, like we talked about. We got to set the tone. We have to set the mood. I was about to rush us through the mood. No, you can't. We got to think of mom. <laughs> I'm so glad you're here because I was about <laughs> to. Ru I was about to hit it, hit it hard, and run. We need to set the mood. We've you already got do. our French press coffee, so we got. We got the French press going. It's important, get yourself a cup of coffee, set the mood when all things domestic that you're doing to serve your family. It, you need to set the mood. And I've already, I've got some dish towels in the, in the washer. I always like to coincide some laundry. We've got some, we brewed some coffee with the French press. Light some candles. Yeah. Get your, your kitchen cleaned up and prepped, ready for the day. Prep the food out. Prep the food, that makes it easy. I notice that when I don't have anything prepped out and I'm looking through the recipe, it can really stress me out that if you get interrupted by your kids, if your husband calls, if your sister calls. Right. 
and you get interrupted, you kind of don't know where you are. If you have everything what kind you of had portioned in out, mm -hmm. bah, 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 bah. it also makes baking with kids a lot easier. It too. really does. Make sure they're occupied. Yeah, well, <laughs> as, as best you can. Yeah, we do. But it's a domesticated day. I mean, things are getting pulled out of the oven. They're taste testing too. It's a lot of delicious fun. Nothing has to be too serious or perfect. This is just setting the mood for a really great day in the kitchen. You gotta so set it. Include the kids or not. Let it be your Sometimes day. you can have it where the kids are pulling up a chair, but I would actually even set that as part of the day when a mini baking day, mm -hmm. you know, where you're baking cookies that day and that's it. Make this, I, I love baking days because it's about us sharing this time together, me and you. Mm, me and, me but too. when I'm at home too, it's also just a form of relaxation and almost meditation and it dare really I is. say worship it, right? for me by myself. Right. And so... I like the kids. You're people. like, thank you, Lord. Yes, thank, thank you, you, Lord, for this, for this day. I, right? It's just everything is worthy of his praise. And it so, just, yeah, so if I've got my girls downstairs playing with Barbies, um, I'm not complaining. I no. need them to come join me. I'll no. tell you that much. <laughs> it's like you guys could stay put. <laughs> Go ahead, stay down there. I'll call you when it's ready. All right, while it's busy. Yeah, so get your coffee going. Fire up the French press. Nice. Light some candles. Get everything ready. Let's start baking day. Let's do it. Okay, we are ready. We're going to start with the cinnamon rolls. Yeah, because those take a little while. So they do. You want to get them rising and all of that. Now we. This is using. This is what's so great about the um, white bread. I know. This is using our white bread. In right. Episode one, not the starter episode. Nope. This is with the our mom's white bread. Yep. And so I use this for our cinnamon roll. So this is already on its second rise. It's ready to roll out into cinnamon rolls. We want to get it going and rising in this nice big cast iron skillet. Ambiance. Yes, exactly. <clears throat> it's got a, it goes with the it whole goes with chili, the chili thing. thing. Exactly. It goes with the whole chili thing. So we have this rising. Now this makes two different loaves of bread. So it's a double batcher. We're going to use part of it. We're going to make it all up, but we'll only mm. use part of it for dinner. And then we'll give you a pro tip about how to save and freeze the rest. So. Yep to use down the line, down during your week or a special treat for or the pull kids. pull it out for like breakfast, like one at a time. Exactly, and that's what you wanna do. That's the whole idea. Yep. You don't wanna do this all in vain. I mean, you wanna have it like, hey, this served me well. Exactly. And I mean, I, you don't ever wanna be like, well, that wasn't worth it. You know, it's gone in a day. And I also feel like having a huge tray of cinnamon rolls gives me a lot of anxiety because it's it one does. of my favorite foods. And I'll want to eat it till it's gone. Exactly. So it's good for a little portion control. It's portion control for sure. Kids can want to, you know, pretty soon I'll see forks just digging into it. They're yeah. just like for just, <laughs> just for the heck of it. And I see a dead Take fork. Take the middle out. Just taking, everyone's just taking so, the middles out. The middle. The middle. My husband's an Audi. I'm like, good. you're a weirdo. Get Stay away. That way, that's weirdo. good. Because the middle is so ooey gooey and soft, you know, that's yeah. the best part. So, but when I go to do a, the, my, I love making it nice and long and big. So I'm going to just roll it out more lengthwise, obviously, than uh, heightwise. I'm using a French pin. So I was like a kind of roughly like 12 by 18. Is this the whole, is this the double this batcher? This is the double batcher. Whoa, so this is going to be a big daddy. It is. If you're just using half, it'd probably be about 12 by 18. Right, so, say. yes, I do say. But this is going to be a little bit longer. Now, a lot of times when you start to and begin to roll out stuff, it kind of shrinks back. So sometimes you got to kind of let it rest a minute and then come back to it so it can settle itself down. And you definitely want it a nice thin size. You want it thin. More cinnamon sugar that way. Yeah, exactly. Mind you, this recipe, I'm telling you, you're like, okay, well, if I freeze it, sometimes women will bake, and I don't know what recipes those are, that you can that you bake the frozen dough. I've never been really that successful with frozen dough. I'm always better off. Par baking doesn't like to be my friend either. I prefer to just kind of bake things off and then freeze. 
um, because at least with my recipes, because I know what they do when I take them out. So when I take this out, this recipe, it's just as soft as and delicious if with a little bit of just thawing on the island than is if you had just pulled them out. And you can warm them up in the microwave for 30 seconds or something and they're like perfection. Yeah, it's always scared me when they've said to put it in the freezer and then let, and then take it out. Or par-bake. Yeah. Par-bake is always, that always scares me. I'm like, this is not gonna turn out the way I want it to. Yeah. So you just bake it off and then either freeze it from there or keep it on your counter for the next day. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Just leave That's it out. That's what I did for Christmas. I, I baked Bake it them off the night before and then kept it on the counter for the morning. And I mean, honestly, if you like them warm, then that's fine, but I will say they taste really good at room temperature. Okay, I think this is plenty long. Let's get some butter and let's, let's get, get some, some butter and sugar, will so, you please? Again, I'm using Kerrygold. I'm already using the soft serve spun one because it's easy. How much butter do you think? Or, this is a double batch. We need to this work. is a double batch, so it's going to be enough to cover. I'll. Do you think like a, a a stick? A stick will probably do it. So you could could you melt the butter first? If or um, I've seen some have the butter melted. Could you melt it first, or just have room temperature and spread it? I prefer this because when you go to roll it. I'm, you know, I think in my life I've done it melted. Yeah. But um, it's kind of messier when you roll. I see. Okay. I like it this way because everything kind of keeps its form. Yeah. Okay. Here's a tip. Don't overdo it on your cinnamon. You'll ruin it. Too spicy. It's like, you know, it's like you're doing the cinnamon challenge. You think, you think you're doing, it's going to be good because it's going to be cinnamony. Done it before. And it's like. <laughs> it's a cinnamon chowder, like you can't breathe. Okay, you've crossed the line. And, and I'm just talking, it was just thick. But you're gonna wanna make sure that you got a good, even, you know, spread on it. Just don't dump it. This is plenty. All right, so we're gonna, we're gonna, we're not even gonna give them measurements. We're just gonna tell them to eyeball sprinkle. You're gonna eyeball sprinkle lightly on your butter. On, yes. And then with the sugar, I mean, I wouldn't go bananas either, but you can go a little bit more with the sugar than you would the yeah. cinnamon. That's about a cup, and this is a double recipe, so they could do... About, about a cup, three-quarter cup, probably, for this. That's what for I... For a do. double, and if you're just making a single, then a half cup is enough. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so no reason to have to even mix it in advance or anything like no, that. No, no, I've always just done it this way, and it's always just melded all together all perfectly. So now start rolling the long way. Yep, tight so that you get a, a lot of, a lot of circles, a lot of circle ring full of your cinnamon and sugar. And then as you get to the end, you're just gonna kinda seam side down and you're gonna pinch it. I'm gonna eat the hell out of this. <laughs> I, I know. Love I love cinnamon rolls so much. They're so good. Oh, I love them so much. But here we've got this awesome log Serrated knife is kind of best. I am gonna spray my cast iron skillet. Good idea. I'm gonna cut them a nice size. Okay, what would you say, it's about two inches? Yes, I would. About two or one and a half. Two inches would probably be here. Okay, about one and a half. Yeah, I would be about one and a half. You can do whatever size you want. I've done two, and it's like, we're here for it. You know, we're here for the fatties. But for this one, I want to be able to, um, I want it just kind of modest. And um, they blow up as yeah, well. Yeah, they do blow up, especially with mom's bread recipe. Yes. Okay. And I'm not afraid to keep mine cozy. Okay. Oh, I'm so happy, and I'm really hungry, so I just I can't. Know, I'm hungry too. I can't wait. Okay, see that, and I've got my one, two left here. And I'm gonna try to. Oh, you'll find room. Here we squeeze go. them yeah. in, oh, and yeah. get when it they're in. real yes. tight, I think it's gorgeous. Oh anyway. yeah, super pretty. See oh, that? Oh yeah. So, oh yeah. So Perfect, beautiful, tight squeeze. We're gonna let these probably sit for 20 minutes. That's it. 
Um, and get these uh, in the oven at 375 for about 25 to 30 minutes. I always notice that with this recipe, if they get too browned on top, you if they're too browned, you're looking for a light, t like a kiss. Yeah, a little kiss of brown. Because if it goes more than that, they're gonna get, they're not as fluffy. I'm hungry. I'm, I know, me too. Good. It's, it's gonna be delish. Should okay. we get started on the chili? We should get started on the chili and the cornbread after that, so let's go. Yes. Okay, it's time for chili. It's time for chili. Are you ready? Let's go. Okay, so we've got, you know, a couple tablespoons of oil mm -hmm. uh, dribbled here, and I've got two sweet onions, yellow onions, whatever your preference is, okay? I'm gonna give them, I'm gonna sweat these out. And what's, I mean, honestly, what's, what's great about this too is it's, it's kind of like a dump, dump and you're dump done. Dump it all in and you're done, yeah. and it doesn't even need to simmer very long. No, nope. it's, it's like 20 eat. minutes to 30 minutes. I will make this for lunch easy for my kids, and they're so happy. Okay, we're also putting in our bell peppers. Okay, so now two bell peppers. I like a green or an orange and a yellow because I like the color you like the in colors. my chili. You could do two green, two red, two yellow, two orange. Do whatever you want. You could do green because you're watching your budget. Yeah, green's always cheaper. Yeah. And it tastes good too. It really holds it really up does. to the sauce. It really does. It doesn't matter. Okay, so sweat. Sweat these out with the onion. So these are two whole yellow and green. Two whole and yellow one whole and green. Onion. Nope, two onions. I like my oh, onion. Oh, oh, okay. Too small. If I had a huge one, I would just do one. Okay. We're gonna sweat these out, get these nice and You soft. gotta have that chunky, chunky chili. Season along the way. I like a chunky chili. Some people like a really refined, mm -hmm. almost smooth chili. Not me. No, I me like neither. Mine real thick and hearty. Yeah. Hence the dipping. My kids are always dipping. Yep. One diced jalapeno. I take the ribs and the seeds out because I do not like to suffer while I eat food. Right. But if you love heat, if people in your family love heat, keep the seeds in. That's what makes it nice and spicy. Right. Now with mine, my family does like it a little spicy. So I had a whole jalapeno with seeds. Yeah. And it's hot, but it's not too hot. Honestly. Did you think mine was too hot? I do not think yours was too hot, but I'll tell you this. One time, I kept the seeds in, and it really depends on the jalapeno. It does. It was inedible. Oh uh, yeah. And so I've been scared ever since. Right. You and just, I know you my do parents have to won't be touch it. Yep. So I have to really yep. be careful. Nice Probably and edge soft. Of garlic, huh? Probably edge of garlic. Um, I'm gonna add my garlic, okay, buddy? <laughs> Three cloves minced. Add more or less if you'd like. I like three. It seems to be really well balanced. Okay, now I love to put my seasonings in now. It really awakens them. So this is about two heaping tablespoons or palmful of chili powder. And this is about one real heaping tablespoon of cumin. Good dollop of pepper. We get more salt in here too. And I like doing it this way too because you can really kind of see the spices on mm -hmm. so you can, uh, it's almost like you can gauge it. Like, okay, this looks like it's perfect yep. in terms of spice. I may need to add more or uh, add a little cumin. I do that when I taste yep. test, as we taste this all the way through, I usually add some more. Maybe I want it a little spicier. Now I'm adding, Jenny only uses one pound. I like a really thick, hearty chili. I use two pounds of 80-20 hamburger. You can just use one pound, but then add more beans, um, or get it really chunky with two. I have a very man-eating, oh, man-eating, <laughs> meat-eating husband. <laughs> um, man-eating too. He's a manly. He's a man-eater. He's a, he's a man-eater. Oh, uh, me too. <laughs> People usually say when they see me, they're like, she's a man eater. <laughs> and Blame it on mom and dad. Okay. okay. I'm not responsible for these jeans. Right. <laughs> I'm in my yoga pants. Teddy. I'm in my yoga pants with like a high bun. Yesterday's makeup. Right. She's a man eater. <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot of beef to well, work in here. I was saying. Here you go, Rob. Jenny puts the bean goop in, and so I do because you always have. 
It helps thicken it. This is a bean it's trio. It's a natural thickener. It has blend yes, organic I love kidney, it. pinto, and black beans. You can you use can't two go cans wrong. of kidney, two cans of black. Use what you want, but I like the trio. Oh, me too. If you can't find it, just get a can of kidney, get a can of pinto, and get a can of black, and just make it real good. Oh my gosh, I mean, I love beans. Who's yes, a bean do. girl? Like, I mean, and I just do. I love them, I always have. Now I use, this is, this is optional. I put in a little tomato paste just to make sure it's just nice and thick. About half of a small can, about three ounces will do ya. And I like to add that in at this stage as well to kind of get it coated. Uh, those impart also another flavor profile. Yep, another depth of flavor, yep, exactly. Looks amazing already. Like you could, if so, once that hamburger's cooked, you could literally put it on your plate and you're good. This is like the With dip. some chips. This is the dip we're talking With about. With some chips. Okay, I add fire roasted diced tomatoes, about 28 ounces, nice and chunky again. It doesn't have to be fire roasted, okay, but that... Yeah, see, I don't add that with mine because my kids don't like to see tomatoes. You gotta do what your family likes. So I use tomato sauce. 28 counts or, or 28 ounces puree, and I have two cans of this. Oh, this is a big batch. Happy freezing. What? It's a lot. <laughs> but, you know, there you go. Let me make sure. Yeah, this is not too much. Yeah headed that direction. <laughs> it is actually headed that direction, you're right. Oh, but look at this. Oh, yum. And then here you're going to, and she's going to have to, this really got mighty. So normally, you're going to reevaluate your spices on this probably. Now this, I will say, I mean, this is big. Now you could be doing this. This is what's great about repurposing your chili, even throughout the week. You could do this over rice, some yep. steamed rice. Yep. Um, and so here you could serve up a big bowl of chili in a traditional way. Um, for lunch the next day, you could do it as a dipper so they could have some corn chips and then some- Where's your spoons? Chili. Oh, here it is. And then you could do, um, and then you could ladle it over rice, mm -hmm. you know, for a full dinner, do it a whole different way. So that's another way of doing it. Mm. And then, you know, then you got your cornbread and that, so, you know, by the end of the week, you're done, yep. but it's, but it's enough change to it that you're not, you're not like, uh, no, you know what I mean? Right. Exactly. So this is what's great about making a big vat, it looks like. And it does freeze beautifully and cooks Okay, so I have not frozen it, so it does. Oh, no. It, what are no. you putting it in to freeze it? I'll, I, like a Tupperware. Okay. And then I wait for it to thaw enough to release from, and I just plop it in there, put it on low. Perfect. And it's just as delicious, if not more delicious. Yeah. So I will have to freeze this, otherwise it'll go bad. Now let me see. I think I could use... Mmm. Mmm. Did you put it on me? You did. So is it perfect? Taste it. Let me know if you... Do you think it needs more chili? It needs a lot of things. <laughs> I would then get your cumin. You know, I usually do, now that I think about it, I usually do about six tablespoons. So that makes sense. Mm -hmm. We're gonna put this all over the top. Okay, stir that in. Now let's check. I wonder if we're giving everyone anxiety because they're like, wow, they're just dumping a lot in here. How do I follow this? <laughs> we'll tweak the recipe so that you know exactly what our ratios are. Don't worry. I'll have it nice in the description. But this is all a part of cooking Yep. as well. Um, we're just kind of showing you um, the process sometimes. Mm. Did that hit it? I think it's delicious. Mm. Better? Better. Better. Yeah. That's, that's perfection. So you want a really strong chili taste? You can taste your fire roasted tomatoes. Um, you want to make sure that you can also taste the cumin. Okay, I gotta do another bite because it's so good. Do another bite, and then I'm gonna show oh gosh, them mine so real quick, give them a breakdown. Mm. Mm. I'm so hungry that I feel like I. Can... I know. Well, we should ladle it into some bowls for a little mini mini lunch. But give it thirty minutes. It's not do. even ready it's yet. Not, but mine is. Lying. Mine's ready. Oh, I think gosh. we might have to have a little bit. Of, <gasps> we should just yeah. Mm. It's too good. Okay, so for mine. Mine has already been simmering away for, yeah, so yours is 30 minutes. more kind of saucy soupy. Yeah, that's beautiful. Um, 
And what I did for mine was I did like my veggies. I did bell pepper, two bell peppers. I did one onion, not two. Um, I did one jalapeno with the seeds. I did two cans of beans. I did one pound of ground beef. And then I added two cans of tomato sauce. I mean, so it was really, and then that two tablespoons of chili powder, cumin, granulated garlic. I did no, I didn't mince any. And I put fresh cilantro. So, um, it's a really delicious, delicious, delicious. So that's just two. It's not as, um, but this, I'm looking It's just delicious. a preference. It's, it's super thick and hearty. Um, more of oh, like a like soup, like a thick soup. It, like, yeah. They're both equally They're both delicious. equally They're, delicious. They got a little bit of a taste different profile because I think of the fire roasted tomatoes. Do you think that's I like think this? the fire roasted tomatoes. Yeah, they give it a little bit of a different profile. Yum. So. Yum. It's just absolutely delish. So let's let this let's let this cook and then let's get um, going. Cornbread going. Cornbread. Yes. We are getting ready to put our cinnamon rolls in. They have fully bloomed, puffed. Okay. Yep. Puffed and delicious. So yeah. we're ready. I mean, if that doesn't look gorgeous, that was about exactly a half hour too. I guess it was. So in the oven it goes. We're gonna set it for thirty minutes. Now it's time for cornbread. Let's do it. All right, it's on and popping. Yes, it so is. So this cornbread is next level cornbread. It is. It's inspired by Ina Garten, okay? And it is savory. It has cheddar cheese in it. It has a little jalapeno in it. Oh my gosh. And it has some scallions. I love a, a cornbread that has a little bit of flour because it's it's moister. No, I actually more don't prefer if it's the just cornmeal, cornmeal, it's yeah. too rough for me. So this is, I've always loved a cornbread that has both the equal ratios. Three uh, cups all purpose. Or unequal ratios like this. So it's three cups all purpose. We're using some King Arthur flour. So we're gonna do all of our dry and then we'll put in our wet. And we're just doing it with in a bowl here. We don't need a mixer for this. And one cup of cornmeal. Okay, hey, how much now, sugar? We're using sugar now. Also. Remember to keep it elevated. This is an organic cornmeal. Probably really pretty important for when it comes to corn. Whole grain stone, you know, corn is already genetically modified for no cows. nutritional value. You right. want to get the very best. You do. And again, we're using um, a minimally processed cane sugar. Um, how much sugar was that? A quarter cup of okay. sugar. So now we're going to do two tablespoons of baking powder. Two tablespoons. And freaking. There's it's one. right there. Yeah. <laughs> Try to get all cute. You're like, pink, I love that. <laughs> this is a tablespoon. Oh, I, I said two tablespoons. I know, I couldn't find the teaspoon on here. Why do you need a teaspoon? Two teaspoons is one tablespoon. Said I tablespoon? said two tablespoons, I thought. Two tablespoons of baking powder, okay, you guys? When I edit this video yeah, later, we'll, we'll see find who's out. right. Who's yeah. right. Two tablespoons of baking powder and then two teaspoons of salt. How many? One. Two teaspoons. And now we're gonna add our wet, which is two cups of milk. We used whole milk. She likes to do it nice and slow. <laughs> Starting to get passive aggressive, a little chippy in the kitchen. Right? You know what? Roll with right? it. Right? Right? Three extra large eggs, lightly beaten. So you can put it in here and I'd pick a good idea. And again, we're using our pasture vital farms. <laughs> vital farms. Uh -huh. What did I call them? Vital. Vital. <laughs> vital farms. Vital farms. Two sticks of melted butter. So you know it's going to be absolutely delicious. And this was an organic butter that we had found. And then stir that up and then we're going to fold in. Oh my gosh. You guys remember the Schitt's Creek episode where they don't know how to cook or bake and it says to fold in and he's like, what do you mean fold? She's like, fold in, David. And then this is 16 ounces. We're gonna use some of this for later, so about half That's, of this. It, yep, half of that in there. Oh my gosh. Live a little. And you don't wanna over mix. Okay, so one to three minced jalapeno. If you've got babies, omit it because if you think it's gonna to be too hot and you want them to enjoy it. And a third cup of scallions, which is about how many do you think? Two. Whites and greens. Oh, it's beautiful. It smells oh, it's so good. And I have to say that the dough even really smells good. 
This looks delicious. This is ready to go. We're gonna butter our pan and stick her in. Oh my gosh. And I can smell the cinnamon rolls baking right now. I know, me oh, too. So good. This will actually rise a little bit. You'll notice and get softer. And then we will pour it into our prepared pan, which we itch is at just a nine by 12. These are looking outrageous. These are looking pretty, oh my God. they're looking kissed, but I want Anna to get a close up because what I'll do, if you go like this, now see that looks bready. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah So you yeah. can tell, and then I'll get, see you can already tell because of their stiffness that they're done. Oh my gosh. They're done. Oh Jenny, put me out of my misery, please. I'm gonna eat this. Yeah, this is done. Let's see how they're kissed. Yes. They're not all browned. This is kissed and it's done. Yes. Okay, let's get them out. We took out our cinnamon rolls. We're now gonna make the frosting because you can obviously do this when they're warm. I mean, that's... You like to do it when it's warm and it melts? You sure can. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It I makes mean, like a glaze. Yeah. Or you can... Or we'll, we can wait a little bit. It honestly... I've done them both ways. It just honestly doesn't matter. I do... What I do is basically an icing. Now, you guys can do whatever Green you cheese, want. Cheese, butter... I've but always... I've always done basic. I've done... Uh, a powdered sugar and I'll use cream and I add just enough till it's nice and thick. I don't yep. do a runny one. I do a thick a real one. thick one that can be lathered on. Right. And so we're going to probably use a whisk and I have one right in there. So this was about a full package. I, what, how many ounces do you think that is? It was, about four, it was about four or five cups. Yeah. And then she'll kind of pour and this is our um, keep going because this is going to need a little. I know that you got to be careful though because you will overdo it real fast, yep. won't you? It's like then you need more powdered sugar and you don't have any. Yeah, and then then you're real mad. Yeah, making your husband go. And exactly. Then he's, and then he's grumpy. Yeah, he's in his pajamas still. Yeah, he's like, what are you talking about? And I'm like, well, somebody's got to do it. Get tampons while you're there. Yeah, I'm the one sweating in the kitchen. Right. What have you been doing all day? Exactly. What then I start to really get mad. You get. What do you do exactly? Let's discuss. What do you do exactly? Because it looks like you just sit on the couch and watch football. <laughs> That's what it looks like. <laughs> well, I'm sweating and right. cooking and cleaning. Right. Right. He's like, God, go get it. I'm like, yeah. thank you. Exactly. <laughs> the joy moment turns sour. Yeah. You just want some help. And and have a good attitude while yeah, you do it. Exactly. That was like mom when she would ask me to like oh. do clean or something that I didn't want to do. And she's like, and have a good attitude while oh. you do it. I was like, that was the added touch that we didn't want to hear. I was like, what does that look like? Okay, but I'll go do that with a good attitude. <laughs> you know what I'm going to add? Which gives it kind of a caramel flavor. Tell me. Vanilla. Go get it. Homemade. Homemade. Fetch it. My daughters are easy. <laughs> my and my my a couple of my boys are like, Mom, make the, the, the icing with just with it white. Make white frosting. My other sons will be like, then a couple of them will be like, Mom, make it brownish. <laughs> Mom told me in the last video, she goes, You're not as funny as you usually are. And I was like, Cause we're cooking hard. I know, I know. My mom, so she, now she'll, just, she'll, she'll, she'll look at the video first. So now I'm just, yeah, mom always watches it first. So now I'm trying, and then she's like, Why don't you girls wear some button ups? No, look at us. This is embarrassing. I know. <laughs> this is funny enough for you, Christine. <laughs> up i gotta leave at three right. and i go you know so i feel like i'm a caterer at a wedding and we're running late right. and like, who's got time for laughs exactly i really love to see you girls in a button-up is that is she, quit fiddling with your hair girls yeah Je i know she's and then jenny you had the thing around her thumbs mom's like oh i don't want to see that while you're baking <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to see that while you're baking I haven't told your sister yet. I'll call her after I talk to you, but I did not like to see that in the baking. No thumb holes shirts. Yeah, get the thumb, yeah, get that Get the thumb hole shirts. And she like, goes, did you get mayo on it? I was afraid you got mayo on it. <laughs> she did get mayo on it. I Go did. watch that video. There's mayo I... on there. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, you guys. <laughs> with my sandwich. I I'm cannot like, believe it. <laughs> she says this with like mayo kicked on her shirt. I know. I know. Like this is too good. Whenever you're in somebody else's kitchen, you don't even know how to use a microwave. You're like, oh god. I, I know. know. There's so I know. many buttons. I know. Mom's always like, honey, you're gonna have to do all that. It's like, mom, it's basic. I know she did bake. Yeah, one time even for car seats, she's beyond car seats, of course. But I remember trying to help have her. I go, mom, can you help buckle that? She's like, absolutely not. <laughs> I, I, 
no, but, but then you can remember for next time. She goes, I don't need to remember. I only remember things that I'll keep in my memory that I need to remember. This is one of those things I don't want to remember. She's like, um, yeah, this is for you to do. Yes. I'm not going to stress myself out. Or I'm babysitting your kids. <laughs> okay. This feels really light as it sat. You could tell the baking powder yep, it had its way with it. Yep. And has given it a little bit of a rise. Oh, this is, this is, this is, this is. Oh yeah. Okay, and we're going to pop this in. It's gonna be so delicious. What's okay. the oven temp? 350, and it's going to go in for about 30 to 35 minutes. So, in we go. So now we will frost our cinnamon rolls. Let's do it. Okay, here we go. We are. Now look at how thick this is. Oh my god. A little splash of vanilla will really make a nice creamy caramely look and flavor to it. But look at this icing, oh you guys. God. I don't, I mean, this is now not icing. Do you see how this can be thick? So you could really make it thick or thin. So if I you want so much anxiety because this looks so good that I know. I, my heart's beating fast. I know. You can do um, <laughs> milk to make it thinner. But see, look at what a difference. No, you want it thick, and then when it's warm, it'll kind of melt into it anyway. It does. Get this guy. Get that guy. I know. Get him a little. Get him a little. He needs love. He needs a little shit. Oh, yeah. Ooh, look hey. at this guy. Huh. Take I mean, it easy, Barney. <laughs> Back in there. Mm hmm. Or not. <laughs> or not, Barney. Oh, this. This. Okay, now we're. This. We've outdone so ourselves. This is what baking day is all about. This is what you should be doing in baking day. <laughs> so now we're gonna round it all out. Waiting on the cornbread, and then, and then we're, we're gonna, gonna start serving it up. We're gonna serve it up, and we're gonna we're gonna taste. Well, we don't want to hurt their feelings. They have to know what it tastes like, so we have to try it for you. Obviously. Okay, so we are going to make. Uh, fry up some chips. We are, because you know, we're doing chili three ways. Chili three ways, so yeah. this is gonna be like dippy. Dippy, okay. So and so, some corn chips here. You just corn got some tortillas. corn tortillas. And, I'm just gonna throw this into some oil. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and dump them in. 375. Temperature. Yep, You. we did a little quick we ran out of pots, so we're gonna use a wok. That works. It sure does. And they are getting to the point where they're nice and they're hardening up. These look done. So you want to season right away. And we have this, I have this, um, I got it at Whole Foods because they didn't have any chili powder. Um, tagine, oh, I hate to butcher the name of it. You're but gonna. um it's a classico seasoning it has lemon in it and salt and so we thought hey let's put this on top of the but listen just plain salt is so a little salt and pepper and you're good to go but we're giving it a little bit of extra oh yum yum i mean come on yeah. look at that wait Oh, uh-uh. That lime. Oh my gosh. Stop. The seasoning. Stop. The seasoning. Stop. Oh, Jenny. Oh. I got that on accident. Oh. I got that on accident. Yum. I'm eating this. You know what? You know what it is for me? The lime. Mm. The lime is making it. You're probably gonna want to get this. I'll put the brand on there. I'm sure you can buy, get it online if you need to. Mm -hmm. Or, you know what you can do? Lime zest. Yep. I've done zest. I've zested corn chips before, and I've zested my own popcorn. Oh yeah, yeah. Really, really good to do lime. Yeah. We need to go ahead. What a happy accident. That, that was just terrible. Everything is a happy accident. The best is usually from accidents. I want to make sure that, because it tastes good. It's like a Dorito. Yeah. <laughs> Where you can't get enough of it. Okay, well, we're going to go ahead and serve up 
serve it all up. Our cornbread is just about ready, so we'll be pulling it out and serving up and eating it. I'm starving, let's go. We're prepping our dip right now. I've got a bowl of chili. We've got a bowl of chili here. We've got um, some fresh cilantro. We have some cheddar cheese. We've got some scallions. We're putting in a dollop of sour cream. We are uh, gorgeous. Oh my gosh. I mean, beautiful. Yeah. I mean, seriously though. Okay, so we're gonna try, this is our chili as a dip. Yes. With our homemade fried up chips with our special chili seasoning. It's really sticking up. The chip is hearty enough to really pick it up, you guys. Oh, I gotta make sure I got all of it. Oh my God. Oh my God, why are we not, why do we not have our own restaurant? Am I right about the chip and the dunking? I mean, Jenny, I'm not mm -hmm. even kidding. No, this, this is actually one of the best things I've ever eaten. I'm not <laughs> I, 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 I'm not kidding. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh mm -hmm. my gosh. I taste the cilantro. I love cilantro. I do too. The scallions, the spiciness and the heat of the chili, the chunkiness of the chili. Oh, I'm paired up against these chips. The are, spices on those really elevate the, the chili because you get that. Cause these are sharp. Like those tones are sharp on the chip, like a Dorito. The, uh, the acid from the lime yes. is really popping. It's, um, if you it's got pretty limes, much over the top. Put a wig on this. Yeah. We don't Definitely. have limes. <laughs> right. But that really, we were talking about how that really would make it. And usually I do do some limes. This, this is crazy. crazy. This is crazy. This is too much. Okay. So chili one way. Now to the next. All right, so Jenny and I have both of our chilies. Actually, ours look very similar <laughs> side to side. We've they just got a new bowl, so now this is the second way, which is the chili and the cinnamon roll. Yeah, I'll scoop out the cinnamon rolls. Let's do it. Okay, let's do it. Let me get my... Now these are still very hot and gooey. See how it's cooked all the way through? Oh. So that kissed browning is what you're looking for. Oh, I'm telling you, you guys will never be looking for another, <laughs> put it right on the side, for another chili or another, um, well, that too, cinnamon roll recipe. This, this will be your go-to. Buddy, I'm an in it. I'm a little jealous of that, but you know what? I kind of want my little crunch here. I'm killing myself. Okay. Oh, yeah. I'm the oldest. Yeah, you're the oldest. Oh. It's mainly all in, so I'm happy. Oh, buddy, get, see? You see? Oh, yeah, just, sorry, there's just, a scoop of the innards in here. Just go in. Go in. Oh, my God. Okay, so we've got our chili and cinnamon roll. Jen's nervous about the cinnamon roll. I, I know, I am a little. Oh, my God. Mm. The chili is over the top. Let's go ahead and I tried this cinnamon roll with the chili and it's You did? It's awesome. Okay, let me let me try it. It's awesome. Mmm. It is. Or just put it on the side. You don't have to dunk it. I just wanted to know what that tasted like. It's that that sweet and it's the sweet and the spicy. The way the sugar and the cinnamon play with the spice of the chili. It's really amazing. A Midwesterner's paradise. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's good. I mean, I'm... this, you'll never look for another recipe for cinnamon rolls ever again. You don't need another bread recipe. If you just, this bread does it all. We're going to be showing you all else it can do too. So many but... cinnamon roll recipes are fussy. This was so easy. So I'll never easy. go back. Mm -hmm. This is why our families love us. The cinnamon roll with the chili is actually really, really mm -hmm. good. If you don't want to, don't do it, but mm, that's really, really good. Just dip it in that hot. It's good. It's good. It's good. Okay, cornbread is done. Oh yeah. Good oh, grief. Yeah. Good grief. Uh, okay. okay, we're gonna do our third way, which is the cornbread. Oh yeah. 
Oh, and you can see the cheese. Yep, you can see the cheese, the jalapeno, the scallions. Stop. cilantro, a little cilantro, some scallions, a little dollop, a little dollop, a little more, a little dollop of Daisy. Exactly. And, uh, you know, uh, excuse me, voila, excuse me, yeah, okay, quiet on the set. Okay, <laughs> we're getting ready to dive in. Oh. oh my gosh. Oh, look, look at the cheese. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Was that? Let's talk about that for a minute. Let's talk about what just happened. I mean, it's hard to describe. The spice of the chili is forward. Then you taste the corn. Mm -hmm. The cornbread is sweet. It's flavorful. The, I love the moistness that the flour imparts, mm -hmm. but you taste that cornmeal, that cornbread. It's got that cornbread, the way it pairs structure. up with the chili. I really love this. We nailed it with putting it over the top of it. I would eat that for dinner. I mean, this is the meal. This is the meal. Mm-hmm. Because there's so many components to this that just it having been the accent, the chili. Yeah, so immediately you get hit with the spice of the chili. Then you get the cornmeal comes in the back end. Then you start to taste the fun stuff. Mm -hmm. You taste the fresh cilantro. You taste the scallion. Yep. The cheese kind of comes through, making it really creamy. Then you got the coolness of the sour cream. And the, the, the cornbread's just a little bit sweet because we have some sugar in there. Right. And so then that just really rounds it out to hit every single taste bud. Yeah, and you'd like to see the stringiness of the melted cheese in your cornbread and then on top of the chili. There it is right there. Mm -hmm. I mean, are we done today? So I think we're tapped out. <laughs> This was so delicious. That this was a blast. You guys, you have to make this stuff for your family. They're you gonna do. die. Yum. They're gonna love you. All right, another successful baking day. Bye. Bye.